Hi, and welcome back to Inside Trading, the show that's all about trading. Every week we discuss what trading is all about and the required habits of being a successful trader. This is all about helping you make more money. Now with me is my regular co-host, Pan Long. He's the founder and CIO of Track Record Trading Academy. V, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian, it's good hey, to be guys. back. Let's talk about trading. Now, today we can't talk about trading without what happened overnight on the Fed. Now, before we do that, however, as always on the show, we start with a quote. And the quote for today is from Stanley Druckenmiller. And V, you take it away. So, uh, he says... Uh, he believes that good investors are successful not because of their IQ, which is uh, contrary to many uh, many portrayals of successful investors in the in the media, right? In movies, Hollywood movies, and all those, they always look so cool and so so clever, right? But it's not about their IQ, not how smart they are, but rather about um, their trade, their investing discipline. So what that means is that. Uh, to be successful, you do you do need to have a structured and methodical investment process, which you can reuse. It, it is replicable. You can use it through different market cycles. Uh, it must have risk management principles. It must have a, a at the initial initial stage how you come up with your trading ideas, and and most importantly, it has to have measurable outcomes, not just in terms of how much profits you're making, but also adjusted for the risk that you're taking how much returns that you're you're generating using your capital so so you know that you're not taking excessive risk just to make a little bit of money right which tends to be the weaknesses of uh, retail traders now on that note then we we have to talk about the fed the fed and 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 jerome powell gave us some really interesting insights and one of the key things and the theme around this has to be higher for longer yes so let's just look at their projections uh to recap the federal reserve uh kept interest rates unchanged as uh, predicted and expected by most of the market participants the partner the market was pricing for 99 percent chance of a uh, unchanged policy and the fed delivered as usual according to market projections market expectations they did not surprise the market but they did surprise the market with some of their projections this is one of the they do a quarterly projections of uh, economic projections as well as uh, the individual um, committee members uh, uh, prediction of what interest rates will be going forward so this is uh, and, and i want to stress here i want to interrupt you at this point of time this is a median this is an aggregation of every individual uh, 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 committee members' expectation and projection. It is Correct. not a plan. Yes, it's not a plan. They did not sit around to discuss what what to put in for this, but it's just a uh, aggregation, as you, as you said, of uh, each individual's personal opinions and personal projections of what the future might hold. Right. So it's important to stress this because it is it is just what they think individually. They have not discussed about what they're going to do. But this is what they personally think. And uh, what's interesting is that they revised economic growth higher for 2023 and 2024. Uh, that's a almost doubling of, of economic growth from their previous projections, which was in June. They do this every quarter. So the next one we'll see is in December. But right now, they think that uh, growth for 2023 will be at 2.1%. Previously, three months ago, they thought it's only 1%. And for 2024, it's 1.5% and uh, previously was 1.1%. So stronger economic growth, which is a reflection of the data we have seen so far. The economy has, economy has been quite resilient despite the aggressive interest rates that we've seen, interest rate hikes that we've seen from the Fed in the, more than a year now. right? And interestingly as well, the unemployment rate, they moved it lower their projections they expect it to be 3.8 percent this year uh they expect that uh for the next two years as well it's going to remain at 4.1 percent previously it was at 4.5 percent for the next two years so they believe that the jobs market will remain stronger for longer periods of time despite admitting that interest rates are now in where in the restrictive zone of policy uh 
meaning that interest rates are now high enough, real interest rates are now high enough to be a drag on economic growth. So this is an interesting thing, uh, uh, V, because, and I remember my, my macroeconomic theory at university, and that was a long time ago, obviously, but the full, <laughs> at that time, full employment rate of unemployment for the US economy was factored to be at 6.0%. So essentially, and then anything below that, obviously the US economy is running white hot. This obviously is a very different scenario. It is positive. It is 4% only for the next couple of years. Yeah, and in the longer run prediction is also at 4%. So they are predicting that uh, the economy will be doing well. The jobs market will be running quite strongly, but uh, inflation is not accelerating to the upside, right? More impo most important is uh, this is their uh, dual mandate. Uh, one is the inflation, the one that they are very focused on, as well as uh, unemployment, right? As a jobs market, so they, they have dual mandate. So they are, they are believing that uh, although uh, unemployment rate remains very low at around 4% for the, for the years going forward, we do not see inflation accelerating to the upside. In fact, it's going to trend lower towards their target, but they will meet their target only in uh, 2026. Right? So that's uh, two more than two years from now. They're going to hit their, their target. So so really, this uh, so it keeps the theme of higher for longer. Then. They're going to keep yes, the rate correct. up until they hit the rate, the targets that they, they set themselves, 2%. Correct. So, so the message is uh, uh, exactly as you said, higher interest rates for longer. Uh, they, the median number of uh, policy uh, committee members still believe that there is one interest rate hikes of 25 basis points, a quarter of a percent for the rest of the year. There's two more meetings for the rest of the year. Uh, market is priced around 50 to 60% probability of this hike, but uh, they did not change their projections. They also thought in June, by the end of the year, the interest rates will be at policy interest rates will be at 5.6 percent. They stuck to that, but more importantly, is that for 2024 and 2025, they believe that interest rates will be now uh, half a percent higher than previously thought. So it plays to exactly what you said. The message, the key message they're trying to inf to, to tell the market was that interest rates are likely to stay higher for longer, because uh, if the economy is stronger than previously thought. The jobs market is stronger than previously thought, right? So they think this is their, their, the, this again is an aggregation of the views of uh, all the committee members, right? For okay. this, just to finish the thought for this one hike that they think that will happen for the, in, by the end of the year, 12 members believe there's one hike, seven actually think that there's no hike left for this cycle. Okay, so let me let's let's focus on helping investors now make money. Given yes. all the inflation uh, inflation data, this uh, growth projection data, unemployment data, Fed fund rates data, how, where should we be deploying our capital? Where are the opportunities to take advantage of of the information that we've just digested? Right. So I think uh, a few things to note. Fact is this: this is their projections. This is what they think. And it's important to, of course, the market reaction, first initial reaction was the U.S. stock markets sold off uh, uh, on the day. NASDAQ sold off 1.5%, S&P 500 nearly 1%. Uh, that's, Asian that's markets are down all over this today uh, uh, yeah. as we record the show. <laughs> that, that is the knee-jerk reaction to this uh, higher interest rates for longer message, right? But again, he... I must stress as well as to note that the Fed chairman himself said during his press conference that these are just projections. This is not their plan, right? They don't sit around to discuss what they're going to do in the next two meetings. This is what they think is likely to happen based on what they think the economy and uh, the jobs market situation will be like and how inflation will evolve. But so far, they have been quite wrong about this, right? As you can see, they are revising their projections three months later. So it's likely exactly. that they're going to be wrong. It's just a matter of how wrong they're going to be. But I believe uh, he did also stress that the inflation data for the past three months has been very good. 
and it's if you're analyzing it, it's, it's very good, but it's just three months. And if they continue to see that, then likely they also will have to revise their views, right? So uh, it is it is just their message. I think they also want to have this message where they do not want the markets to celebrate ahead of time, right? Market so, tends, as, as you know, market tends to price, price ahead of time of what they believe is going to happen, right? So if they had kept everything the same, I think the markets would have uh, reacted with euphoria. Uh, some markets would have rallied very hard, right? If they they didn't change this, they didn't reiterate this message of interest rates higher for longer. Now, V, I want to then, as we end this conversation, really bring back some of the shows that we've spoken about since, in fact, uh, on Midday Market Watch, uh, uh, way back in Q1, as well as throughout inside trade the inside trading show two themes that i think that we should keep in mind one is rising oil prices which we've talked about which is now yes. in, in, in its 90s uh yep. which is going to be a severe impact on inflation the other thing which is not spoken about a lot in media is the impact of food prices we've had a significant increase in food prices, particularly consumer staples, rice and wheat, uh, since Q1. Um, yeah. And in fact, some countries are already starting to restrict supply and exports out of their home markets, uh, countries like India. So that's something that's going to perhaps find its way into inflation data. Uh, and that's something that we, as, uh, I think, as investors need to be cognizant of. Yes, correct. And in fact, the Fed chair himself spoke about this, especially with regards to energy prices. He was asked about this. Uh, how will they react to higher energy prices? So they, he did point out that that's, uh, the energy prices in the short term fluctuations are very uh, wild. So they will tend to see through the short term effects because uh, short-term effects of higher energy prices tend to uh, be more impactful on consumer sentiment as well as consumer spending. If the average person having to pay higher energy bills and food bills, they have less discretionary income, so they will spend less on uh, discretionary goods, right? So the, that should provide a slowdown in the economy, so they will not react to that. Uh, they, they, but if the prices stay at elevated levels for a uh, a persistent amount of time, it could affect inflation expectations. So if that starts to affect inflation expectations, it could eventually feed down to actual inflation and they will react to that. But on that note, it's important to, to, uh, to recap also that in the recent University of Michigan uh, survey with the inflation expectations component, uh, uh, it, it showed that uh, the one-year horizon and the five-year horizon inflation expectations for consumers in the U.S. has come down. So despite recent rise in uh, food prices as well as uh, energy prices. So I guess possibly that uh, base effects are also working out. And we did see in uh, a, couple, a couple of days ago in the U.K. Um, inflation data, uh, we saw that it was much lower than expected, much lower than uh, market expected as well as much lower than the previous month's observation, primarily because food prices, uh, the, the the inflation on the food prices component has come down uh, quite a bit because of uh, base effects, meaning that food prices were very high last year anyway. So it's now about the same level or less. So it starts to be disinflationary or starts to be less of a big, big inflation component in the index now. Now on that note, uh, V, thank you very much for your insights. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Now, we've been speaking. That's it for this week's Inside Trading Show. And we've been speaking to Bang Vi Lung. He's a founder and CIO of Track Record Trading Academy. I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to BizTech's Inside Trading Show. This show will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Mm -hmm.